So if you're like me, you like to travel to new locations, find new destinations, and explore. And one of the best ways or modes of transportation is a good four-wheel drive truck, SUV, or van. So I'm going to share with you guys some tips of how I camp out of my truck and how I kind of approach the whole truck camping setup and explain what I use and just share some tips that I've learned. I'm by far no expert, I'm reasonably new to it, but I thought that it might be fun to at least share kind of some of the things that I do and also be open to you know hearing what you guys do and maybe implementing some of that advice for my future journeys or voyages. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. So the first thing that I'm gonna try to talk about is sleep systems and for me, uh, I obviously do not have a truck based tent and that is because I'm not a very large fan of truck or uh, vehicle tents or based tents and uh, I don't think that they're the most effective or necessarily the best solution and in the end of ends the biggest reason I don't run a vehicle based tent is the fact that I like to have my bed open to being able to do whatever I need it to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, I try to think of my vehicle in the most different capacities that it can and what I realistically do. So having a tent mounted to this truck would definitely hinder it and uh, what I'm able to accomplish with it. So that's why I just have a tonneau cover for now and probably for the foreseeable future. That being said, when it comes to sleeping, I basically have two main or primary options, and that is either a tent or inside the cab of the truck. Now this Tacoma is a double cab, so it does have extra space in the back. It is not super roomy, but if the need be, if I'm camping in more urban areas where I don't have the ability to necessarily pitch a tent, or if I if it's too rainy, the weather's too inclement, I can camp in the back of the truck, and it works pretty okay and I'll explain a little bit more of how it's done uh, as we go. But when I am camping in more private areas and I am able to pitch a tent, usually I will uh, pitch one of two tents. Now I will say it might be a little bit weird, but I do carry two one-person tents. And the reason I do that is primarily because our weather, at least here in Alaska, can change very quickly. And when you're traveling and you're moving from you know place to place to place, in some places you may get rained out and therefore your tent might get wet and you need it to dry. So I don't always have the time to let something properly dry if I'm on the move. So I always carry a backup and it really doesn't take up that much space. One person tents are pretty small to start with, especially if you're based out of a vehicle already. Uh, having two one person tents is not very challenging. So that's what I do, I have two and if one gets compromised or wet, then I'll just, I can just move to the backup instead of having to camp in the truck because my primary tent has been uh, oversaturated with water. So that's the first kind of part of the sleep system. The next part is sleeping bags. And of course, I use a pretty typical system and uh, I use a pretty typical sleeping bags, whatever the generalized weather is going to be, or temperature I should say, is what I will aim for with my sleeping bags. Now, similar to tents, I also do carry two sleeping bags as well. And it's for the exact same reason. Once again, if for whatever reason, a sleeping bag does become wet, they are they take a while to dry out and they lose a lot of effectiveness when they are wet. So making sure that at least you have two uh, sleeping bags is something that I definitely recommend. And once again, sleeping bags are a little bit bigger than tents generally, even when they're compressed down, but it's definitely worth having two. Not to mention if I do have to camp in the truck and I have in the past, you can always use the second sleeping bag as a pillow. So I don't carry a pillow. Uh, but if I need, or if the need arises, I can use my second sleeping bag as a pillow in the truck. And it actually works out pretty well because most sleeping bags are pretty soft and pretty plush. So, you know, best case scenario, I just use the sleep, second sleeping bag as a pillow. Worst case scenario, I have a second means of um, staying warm and staying comfortable should anything happen. So that's the kind of sleep system. Obviously I do use um, uh, an air mattress and the air mattress I use is actually the Neo Air Xtherm by 
Thermarest, and that one is very water resistant, so I don't carry two of them because it's water resistant, and it also is very heat, um, like it's very well insulated. So I like that one, and I found that if you use a really well insulated um, sleeping mattress or sleeping pad, then it actually allows you to get away with some pretty lightweight and uh, I don't want to say necessarily thin, but warmer temperature rated sleeping bags. So that's what I will usually use for a sleeping pad. And yeah, so pretty typical setup, whether I'm in the tent or if I am camping in the truck, usually I'll just use a sleeping bag, pretty light weighted or pretty light rated sleeping bag in the truck itself. So that's what I do for sleeping. Now, the next thing is going to be water storage. And I think that water storage is very important, at least here in Alaska, once again, primarily where my experience is, um, there's not always availability to good clean water. A lot of campsites will have traditional like water pumps, but a lot of that water needs to be either boiled or in somehow purified. And I will usually keep a water purification system in the truck in the event that I need it. But usually what I try to carry is, if I can reach them, So usually what I try to carry is these Aquatainers. They're made by like Reliant, I think is the brand, but they're seven gallon and it takes no money at all. Like literally a dollar to get 36 gallons of water. And so I just take about four of these and I fill them up and that isn't more than enough water to keep me going for over a week. I don't try to use a whole lot of water when I am vehicle camping. I try to be conscious, but of course I do also stay hydrated. So I usually go through, at least drinking wise, I go through about 64 ounces of water a day. And then on top of that, probably like another 16 ounces through cooking and cleaning stuff. So usually I try to be pretty conscious and consume less water, but having seven, or sorry, having four of these seven gallon uh, water containers is definitely really handy. And it's nice to not have to try to either find places to get clean water or have to, or have to spend the time purifying water. Uh, so that's what I do for water storage. And of course, they're all just kept in the bed. And usually what I do to keep them shifting, because this bed is pretty slick, is I just run a piece of paracord through the handle of all of them to, uh, through two of these tie down points. And that works just fine. They don't really slide around a lot. So that's usually what I do for that. Then for food, once again, self-reliance is really key because especially if you're in Alaska and you're traveling to a lot of smaller places like the City of Hope or even places like Seward, there's not a whole lot of places to eat and usually the places that you do find to eat are pretty pricey. So um, having your own food is pretty good or is a pretty good idea. I usually carry like a travel bag that I also keep in the bed of the truck and that is just filled with different uh, food, usually mountain house uh, meals, cliff bars, peanut butter. I just look for anything. I try to gauge my um, activities and tailor my food to that. So if I go out and explore and I'm doing a lot of hiking, I'll usually take a lot of high protein food. So I'll specifically look for either mountain house meals that are high in protein, peanut butter, uh, which is also high in protein, and cliff bars are usually a pretty okay source of protein as well. Uh, in addition to this, uh, jerky is pretty good as well for uh, being super high concentrated protein, just because your body's going through a lot of it. And so that's usually what I look for uh, and try to tailor the food around the activity. Of course, you can also bring bags of things like couscous or rice and cook that stuff up, which does bring me to the next point, And that is my primary cooking system based out of the truck is a jet boil. And I think jet boils are my favorite or jet boil tends to be my favorite. And I recommend jet boils for vehicle camping because they do in fairness, boil water very fast, faster than something like my MSR Pocket Rocket 2. Uh, the jet boil system, it's just designed to heat up very fast. Now, I don't generally like jet boils outside of vehicles because it's a very heavy, very bulky system that really can only be used with itself. Like the jet boil burner is not really compatible with anything but jet boil products. So it's a little bit not so user friendly in that regard, but if you are in a vehicle and you have the ability to carry every 
all the jet boil necessary components. You can get a huge tank that can boil over a hundred, uh, like that can uh, bring water to a boil over a hundred times and you don't really have to worry about, you know, having enough fuel or having the right system. The jet boil will heat water up super fast and is super um, efficient. So that's my primary system for uh, cooking but a lot of the food is kind of MRE style, so it's really just heat up the water, pour the water in this package, let it cook, and done. So it's not super complicated, and I try to keep it pretty, uh, pretty bare bones because the last thing you really want to do, you know, at six in the morning is wake up and like cook an elaborate meal, at least in my opinion. Some people do, and if you like that kind of system, you could also easily run a cooler. You know, especially what I like about having a tonneau cover is when I go into more populated areas, all I have to do is just lock this uh, tailgate and everything's pretty much secure. So I can throw anything that I need within reason uh, under this tonneau cover. Kind of works like a trunk, but a lot bigger. So you could definitely run a cooler, but I'm primarily just sticking to like MREs, free dry, freeze dried meals and stuff like that. So. So another recommendation I will de I definitely have to recommend is make sure you have paracord. Paracord is super handy and super useful, whether it's doing things like tying down your water bottles or making, or water jugs I should say, or making some kind of impromptu whatever you need. Paracord is super helpful and I end up using paracord almost every single time I'm out, whether you know it's, it's usually just little odds and ends, but having some paracord in your truck and I would say you know keeping a good amount of it is a smart idea because you just never know when you're going to use it and paracord has a million uses kind of like duct tape which I would also recommend too but uh, you know just having stuff like duct tape and paracord are little things that you might overlook but they are super handy and I definitely have gotten a lot of use out of them having had them so I encourage that and uh, the next part is trash responsibilities. It's not necessarily something fun or glamorous, but I definitely recommend taking into account, you know, making sure you have either plastic shopping bags or trash bags uh, to put stuff in because a lot of places, at least once again here in Alaska, uh, don't have a lot of a lot of available trash receptacles, but you're also camping in bear country and in bear areas. So if you are cooking up food, you are, you know, producing waste that is uh, potentially tasty smelling to a bear you want to make sure that you have the ability to properly store that stuff and control the amount of scent that way you don't bring a bear into your camp or you don't have to deal with um, issues from wildlife so I definitely recommend being mindful of that and making sure that you have the proper kind of foresight to square away uh, any type of trash and just like have an understanding of what you'll be, what type of trash you'll be producing and how to take care of it. So lastly, the last point is just bear protection. So for this truck and in general, whenever I leave the truck, I have three primary different bear protection uh, kind of tools. Of course, there's bear mace that I'll usually keep handy either in the truck or on me and then I do usually carry a 44 Magnum loaded with multiple different types of bear loads so that also helps and that's usually kept on me or in the truck nearby and then lastly is the Winchester 94 which is the just go-to truck survival rifle slash bear defense rifle so if I do need something or if I have the ability to take it out in time uh, I also have the 3030 in the truck for bear protection so I have three different methods um, so far, I haven't really ran into any bears at campsites in specific, but it is nice to be prepared in case you need to be. So that's basically all the tips I have for now. Of course, I'll probably make more videos about truck camping as I do more and more of it, but I thought that these would just be helpful tips, and more than that, I'm just curious to hear from you guys, see, you know, see what you guys think, and hear from you, and hear from your experiences. So as always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.